Here we are, the moment you've been waiting for, the conclusion of our story, chapters 32 and 33. Do you think that Jax will be able to stop Mako? Do you think Mako will get revenge? Let's read and see. Mr. Opus's strident voice reverberated through the apartment. What do you mean, leave? You heard Mako, Dad, Jax reasoned. He's going to come after us again. He can get back into your heads. Look at what almost happened today alone. You tried to jump in front of a subway train and I thought I could fly. If it weren't for Axel, there was no need to finish the sentence. The Opuses knew perfectly well what would have happened without the president of the Sandman's Guild. Their son would be dead and they almost certainly would not be around to mourn him. We're grateful for Axel, Mrs. Opus assured her. We're very grateful for Axel, Mrs. Opus assured her son. If we neglected to thank him at the hotel, it was only because we were both in shock, and he was pretty angry with his sand men at the time. Who would have thought hypnotists could, would turn out to be such crooks? Her husband chose that moment to inspect his fingernails. This was no time to bring up the family history he worked so hard to forget. Jack stu stuck up for the guild members. Those crooks came through for us big time when we needed them. But we can't expect them to stand guard outside our apartment building. When Mako comes back for us, we have to be gone. Mr. Opus stub stubbornly refused to understand. You mean move? Not just move, Jack argued. We have to change our names, go someplace nobody knows us like a kind of witness protection program for hypnotism. We can't do that, Mom sputtered in outrage. Your father has a job. I have a practice. It's taken years to build our careers so to where we are today. You want us to toss all that in the garbage over your hocus pocus? There's nothing magic about diving off a 14th story balcony, Jax insisted. Even if science can't explain how Mako made me do it, it still happened. And I'd be dead dead, not fantasy dead. I'd, if I'd hit the floor, the same goes for jumping in front of the train, or off bridges, or lighting, lighting yourself on fire, or anything else you can be convinced to do when you're bent. He spread his arms wide. You of all people should listen, Mom. They named this stuff after Mesmer, and he was your cousin. Distant cousin, she said sniffly. Very distant, her husband added. Jax turned on his father. And compared with your relatives, guys like Axel and Mako are amateurs. Amateur night. It's not hocus pocus. It's as real as an earthquake. And if we don't get out of here, we're going to be flattened. The opuses were quiet for a long moment. Jax had not yet won them over, but he could sense that his words were beginning to sink in. Mr. Opus broke the silence at last. It's no small thing to uproot your entire life. I know, Dad. It won't be easy, but the Sandman's Guild has offered to help. Oh, that's a good one, Mom exclaimed. I've seen their kind of help. They're probably waiting for us to leave so they can ransack our apartment. Dad tried to be reasonable. What about money? We have some savings, sure, but that's for the future. It's your college fund, Jax. Jax was grave. No college will accept me if I'm dead. His parents just stared at him. Jax came back to himself with a shiver to see Axel Braintree smiling, reassuring at him. He stretched almost, knocking over the folded chiropractor's table that was leaning against a stack of boxes in the U-Haul. Well, he asked nervously. In less than 24 hours, the Opuses had upended their lives, packed what they could, and were about to leave New York forever. All that would be for... All that would be for nothing if Cynthia's director had implanted a strate any st strategic suggestions inside Jack's mind. Mako was a compulsive schemer to the point of genius, and Jack had just spent more than two months under the man's thumb. Would the director be able to hurt him somehow, or compel him to hurt himself even from a distance? Or perhaps Jack harbored some sort of mesmeric architecture that would serve as a tracking device. What? that would be just as dangerous. Very little was beyond the capability of the hypnotist like Mako. There was no way for Jax to inspect himself for such time bombs. So he had allowed himself to be bent and examined by the president of the Sandmen's Guild. 
It's quite a nifty piece of mind, the tinker in Braintree admitted grudgingly. You carry a suggestion to forget everything you know about Mako and Cynthia. I knew it, Jack scrawled. I've heard stories about hip ex-hypnos who don't even recognize the people they worked with every day. What's the trigger? That's the genius of it, the old man told him. There isn't one. But I remember every hole and every ceiling tile of that place, Jax protested. I wish I didn't, but I do. There's a separate suggestion, postponing the command to forget, and the trigger for that is neither a word nor an action, Jax frowned. Then what is it? A face. She's a real looker, too. Blonde, blue-eyed. In my day, they called a woman like that a dish. Jax nodded. Maureen Samuels was the assistant director. She's the first person you see when you arrive and the last when you go home. The old man's brow furrowed. You haven't been there in more than a week. That should have been more than enough time to wipe your mind clean. Shamefaced, Jax produced his cell phone and switched it on. The lock screen showed a picture of himself standing next to the beautiful Miss Samuels. It was just to show the guys at school, he confessed. I guess I never got around to deleting it. Braintree chuckled. Even the great Mako can't think of everything. He should have hired Quasimodo, not, Marie, Mar not Marilyn Monroe. Anyway, you don't have to worry about it. I disabled both suggestions. Jax gave him a rueful smile. For a guy who formed a whole guild to convince Sandman not to use hypnotism, you're pretty smooth at it. The old man shrugged. It's a gift. That's the whole problem. One minute you're saving the world. The next, you're down at the bank bending the manager to give you a tour of the vault. Mrs. Opus heaved two suitcases over the tailgate. That's the last of it. Your father's gone to take the Bentley back to the dealership. He keeps tearing up, so don't talk about it. Believe me, I won't, Jax promised soberly. You think I feel good about this? I can't even believe it's happening. She sighed, but put on a brave face. We'll leave as soon as he gets back. That gives me a little more time, Jax acknowledged. There's one last thing I have to take care of. Chapter 33 The corridor of IS-222 looked strange to Jack, mostly because he knew he would probably never lay eyes on them again. Funny. There had been days when he would have given anything to get away from this dumpy old building with its smell of sweat socks and stale pizza. Now he was nostalgic about the place, like it was home, sweet home. Maybe it was this. He hadn't really had time to mourn the disaster that had come over his family. Mom and Dad ripped from their lives and careers, thanks to him, and all of them abandoning New York, the only hometown he'd ever known or even wanted to know. Easier to say goodbye to a rusty row of lockers than to admit that Jackson Opus, he'd been for the 12 years, no longer existed. In a couple of days, he'd be somebody else from somewhere else, and that was unthinkable. It was the middle of the 8th period, and the halls were empty. That was a good thing. He didn't feel like explaining over and over what happened since he'd fallen down the stairs and knocked himself silly. Now that anyone would have believed his story, he barely believed it himself. Eighth period, French. He pressed his body against the door and peered in through the small window until he caught Tommy's eye. Tommy was up like a shot, out to join him. I thought you were dead, o Opus. I texted you like 600 times. Jax hauled his friend into the nearest bathroom. We have to talk. Tell me about it. Did you hear the news about your man, Trey Douglas? CNN called it the biggest political meltdown since Watergate. Bigger, said Jax. In Watergate, President Nixon was bent face to face by a staffer. I got Trey Douglas to his teleprompter. You're not making any sense, man. What's going on? Instead of answering, Jax looked deep into the, his friend's eyes. Tommy was insulted. You're not trying to hypnotize me. What for? Relax, Jax intoned. You are becoming very calm. No, I'm not, Tommy spat back. I'm becoming very ticked off. What's with you, Opus? You know you can't hypnotize me. Jax ramped up the intensity of his stare. It was true. He'd never been able to bend Tommy Cicerelli. He also understood that he had to find a way to make it work this time for his friend's sake. It was 
One thing for Jax's own family to suffer, but Tommy was an innocent bystander. Mako had already found Tommy and had memorized him at least once. The boy would never be safe as long as he knew about Cynthia and the Trey Douglas affair. Jax had told him too much already. Fine, Tommy snapped. Bring it on, Merlin. Do your worst. I'm colorblind, remember? I've got you beat. To me, your famous eyes are gray on gray. That makes it hard, not impossible, Jax thought, sharp, sharpening his focus. I fought off Elias Mako last night. I'm an opus and a sparks. I can do this. When the pip image appeared between them, Jax realized instantly that it could only be coming from Tommy. He saw himself in the black and white and the dark green bathroom stalls were a smoky charcoal. Jax wasted no time. Already this intrusion into his friend's mind stung like a terrible betrayal. If he hung around much longer, Tommy's thoughts and feelings would begin to leach into his own, and life was tough enough already. When you wake up, you'll feel relaxed and happy, and this is very important. You'll remember nothing of Jackson Opus's ability to perform hypnotism. You will forget everything he ever told you about the Cynthia Institute and the Sandman's Guild. You will have no recollection of... He recited a laundry list of every possible detail Tommy might have picked up over Jax's weeks at Centia. Never in his brief career as a hypnotism had he been so thorough and so precise. If he left Tommy with one single memory that might somehow land the kid on Mako's radar screen, disaster would surely follow. Jax had turned his own family inside out. He allowed Tommy to suffer. He'd never forgive himself. When he finished, he found himself panting as if he just won a marathon. There remained one more thing for him to say, and it was the most painful of all. Anyway, you and Jackson Opus were never close, he murmured, choking up a little. You barely know the guy, so it doesn't really bother you that he's not around anymore. He left his friend, his school, his life. He barely noticed the bustling city around him as he retraced his path to the loaded U-Haul. It was time to disappear off the face of the earth. The end. Hmm, not much closure in that ending. Maybe there will be another book to follow to see what happens to Jackson. These are some unanswered questions. What happened to Mako? Do they actually get away? So you can maybe write your own ending. Think of what you think would happen later on down the line with Jackson's new life. Mako something to think about and then if there comes out another book you'll be able to know if your prediction was true if not you can just have your own fantasy and your own ending i miss you guys so much and i'm glad i got to finish reading this book to you and i hope i will see you again maybe i'll come pop in for a visit at the end of the school year love you all bye